Lady Ada, and I'm here at the Adafruit factory. You can see all the machines behind me. These are machines that make the electronics that you know and love, and this is where we do all of our packaging and shipping and testing, so it's pretty exciting for me to be broadcasting from here to introduce for you the new Adabox, Adabox 3. Now, what is the theme of this Adabox? Well, as you can maybe tell from my beautiful desk, it's cloud theme. This is our Internet of Things box where you can make internet connected sensors and motors and displays. And uh, let's dig in and see what you get in Adabox 3. Okay, here we are, Adabox 3. It is red themed. So let's start unboxing it. This red background is not just a nice overlay, it's also a list of all the parts you get. And uh, we teamed up with DigiKey, which is one of our favorite electronic suppliers, and uh, we worked with them to come up with what would be a really good collection of sensors and parts to get people started with the Internet of Things. Because a lot of people are interested in, you know, making fridges that can email or toasters that can tweet. So here's the contents list, and you can check over it to make sure you've got everything as well. And then we also have all the links that you might want to check out to see the tutorials and guides. Uh, the Adafruit team and DigiKey wrote some awesome guides. We have dozens of tutorials that can get you started with all of these components so you can mix and match and make something fun. And then, of course, there's also a discount code. So if you want to pick up some more parts for a future project, you can get 10% off automatically. Nice. Okay, and now the box. Okay, well we've got a really lovely tissue paper. Um, check it out, I think some people have done some fun crafting projects with this tissue paper. It's got soldering irons and Adafruit's circuits. And I'll carefully undo this. So careful. Kind of hard to not rip tissue paper though, being that it's tissue-like. Okay. All right, so here we go. Okay, starting out, you get a special collector's edition pin. You can only get this pin if you've got an Adabox 3. This is our Nimbus, the friendly cloud entity pin. And uh, wear it with pride. It's kind of cool and shimmery. And um, this is the cloud. I mean, this is the cloud I'm broadcasting from, but it's also the cloud that you will interact with. And it's friendly and it's happy. And it doesn't give your data to government agencies without your permission. So this is um, part of our series of collectible pins. Each Ada box has its own unique pin. Maybe future boxes will have something else. It even has a little Adafruit on the bottom. That's cool. Nice work. Yeah, okay, got your pin. And then this is a ruler, uh, but it's kind of handy too if you're an engineer. It's got all sorts of neat measurements on it. A little bit of a challenge to open. Should have brought scissors on the cloud. Okay, there you go. So this is uh, a version of the Adafruit engineering ruler. It's the uh, one PCB to ruler them all. This was designed by Frank uh, here at Adafruit. And uh, it's got all the different parts that you might experience when you put together electronics in whole sizes, and it's DigiKey Red. But also kind of handy if you're like, hey, what wire gauge is this? Or what's, this, um, what's the symbol for a transistor? Or how big is a D-pack anyways? How big are your trace widths? And you also get, of course, a ruler. You get six inches over here, and then you get 15 centimeters over here. So whether you're imperial or metric, you're covered. Okay, so now we're getting to the electronics. Let's kind of move this over here. Open up our bag. I'll go in order of uh, what you'll probably use. Okay, so start off, we have a half size breadboard. Check out a really cool guide about breadboards where we explain how these work. This is your uh, canvas for your electronic dreams. You can plug in all these components that come in the kit into the breadboard to wire them up. It's a lot easier than soldering. This is a no solder kit. So hold on to your breadboard, you'll need it. There's also a sticky back if you ever want to you know, stick it to something. But for now, we're gonna keep it unstuck. Okay, and here is the uh, 
the engine of all of your projects. You'll need a microcontroller. And this is the microcontroller we're going to use. This is an ESP8266 Feather. It's part of our Feather line. If you've subscribed to Adabox for a while, you've probably got a collection of Feathers now. They're really handy because you can mix and match different accessories and they all have the same pinout. So it's really easy to you know, take a project that maybe wasn't internetified and then you use this Feather and it's got internet. So this module here has a Wi-Fi antenna. It can connect to Wi-Fi in your home or office or school, and it'll allow you to send and receive data over the internet. So that's pretty sweet. You can also run it on battery power, which could be handy if you want to sense things, say, in your basement, where you, know, you want to know whether there's a water leak and you don't have uh, you know, a, a power, your, there's a power outage, you want to make sure that you're still sending data even if the wall outlet stops working. Or maybe you want to just take it on the go. So here's the feather, and it's got all these pins. And the pins are also sockets. So you can plug this into your breadboard like so. Bam. So now you've got sort of the beginnings of your project. You've got the Wi-Fi part, the microcontroller part. And then over here is where you can put your sensors and, and displays and motors. Next up, we've got the assembled Featherwing OLED. This is our most popular Featherwing. So just like you've got these feathers, you might want to add capabilities to them. So this Featherwing is something that plugs on top of the feather and gives you more capabilities. So this one is an OLED display, and I'll be showing this off soon. But for now, just believe me that it's a lovely black and white display. You get. 128 by 32 pixels, which means you can do little graphs, you can do text or icons. And what's nice is it plugs right on top. So for example, if you want to print out uh, the current status or connectivity or battery level, you could display it on this OLED, but you still get all of this room over here. It doesn't take up any space on your breadboard. Super sweet. Next up, you've got the battery. So be careful with this. If you're not super experienced with lithium polymer or ion batteries, check out our guides. We have tutorials on how to use these. Um, they are for more advanced users, so you know, be a little bit careful with these. They're not for chewing or crushing or poking holes in. Um, they are a fire hazard, so please use common sense and care when working with these batteries. If you do decide to use the battery, again, it's not required for any of the projects, you can plug it in over here into the feather. Hold on. There you go. And whatever project you're running on the feather and the OLED will keep running even when it's not connected to your computer. Very nice for portable projects. OK, now we've got some more parts. OK, so these are some wires. So. If you want to um, connect sensors or devices to your breadboard, you can use these wires. They're kind of like, a, like licorice strands. So you can remove the wires by pulling them apart. So you get 40 wires total in all sorts of different colors. And then if you want to wire up a project, you just poke the sharp point into the two breadboard connections you want to connect. Again, check out our breadboard guide for a lot more details on how to wire up breadboards. But if you follow guides on our tutorials, they'll say, hey, connect this pin to this pin or this LED to that sensor. You'll probably want to use these handy dandy wires. OK, and so you've got you know, your Feather and you've got your OLED. But now you actually want to uh, maybe connect some sensors and devices. So we uh, went kind of like all out and gave you a whole bunch of cool sensors that we thought would be useful with the Internet of Things. So to start, here's one of my favorite sensors. This is a PIR sensor, and it even comes with a handy cable. And then you can plug these wires into your breadboard if you want. This sensor is a motion sensor. So you might have seen these you know, maybe in bathrooms or um, other places where you can wave your hand to turn on a light or um, you know, make a faucet go off or something. These sensors detect human motion. So this could be pretty handy if, say, you want to make an Internet of Things device that tells you when your mom is breaking into your room and not telling you. So you would have this sensor on your closet, and then it would connect to your feather, and then that feather would email you when somebody's walked into your room. Very handy. Always know who's going into your room. 
So this is a PIR sensor, but it's also good for other projects. Like again, maybe you want to uh, turn on a fan only when somebody enters the room, and that way you can save and conserve energy. Okay, so it's your PIR sensor. We have a full guide on this too. Cool sensor. Here's another really handy sensor for if you are doing Internet of Things projects. As you can tell, it's a little bit magnetic because these screws attach to it. This is a door magnetic sensor. It's kind of neat. So this is like a switch, except the switch only closes when this part, which is magnetic, is next to this part. So what this would be useful for is detecting if, say, your mailbox was opened when this part is connected to the mailbox door and this connected to the mailbox. When the door opens, this switch opens and you can detect that with your feather and then maybe send you an SMS and say, hey, your mail's arrived. Or um, you know, maybe you want to notice when uh, somebody's opened a door. That's what these are often used for, open a window. So this will be able to tell you when something is pulled apart or opened. It's also kind of a nice generic sensor. You can use for a whole bunch of things if you want to detect you know, if something is close to something else. So we call it a door sensor, but it's really a magnetic sensor. Okay, now this is also a great sensor. This is a DHT22 temperature and humidity sensor. So I'll be showing off a demo with this soon. It's kind of nice. This sensor, these you know, sense motion or location. This does environmental sensing. So inside of here, is a temperature sensor and a humidity sensor. So when you wire this up to your feather, you can detect the temperature and humidity locally, and then maybe use Adafruit IO, send it to our service and graph it over time. So you can detect when you know, your greenhouse maybe needs a little bit more misting, or maybe your house is really like too hot, you turn on the AC or something. So this is a really good sensor for sensing the environment. It's uh, you know, pretty good quality. It's not going to be as good as you know, a super fancy $50 sensor, but for basic projects with you know, greenhouses or humidors or environmental sensing, it's nice and solid, well-known sensor and uh, very easy to use. Okay, so all of those things that we've shown so far are inputs. They take information from your environment and put it into the cloud. Here's a way to get information from the cloud from the computer to the world. So this is a servo motor. So for example, let's say you want to remotely control a device or you want to turn on and off a light that you know, doesn't have an um, electrical switch, maybe it only has a mechanical switch, like on the wall. So you would use a servo and you could connect these little horns. They're kind of a, you know, mechanical connections. And then from remotely, you could have it flick the switch on and off. There's a lot of different projects you can do with a servo, and I like that these are nice and small, they're easy to attach to things, and they're easy to use. This is a really good way to control the world around you once you've got all this sensor input. Okay, and last but not least, I included a bag of, well, parts. This is the Huzzah Starter Pack Component Bag. It's just a bunch of parts that I find really handy. Like, they're not necessarily a humidity sensor or a servo, but you're probably gonna find them really useful when building your project. And I like to include a whole bunch of generic parts as well. So let's start with RGB LED. So this is a red, green, blue LED all in one, so you can make it, make any color in the world you like. And it's good for indication, like maybe you want to have it turn purple when you know, IO is connected or turn red when your network is down. So this is kind of nice because you can make it any color. And then we also include a whole bunch of resistors for use with that LED. It's good to have an LED resistor. So here's your 560 ohm resistors. Here is a piezo buzzer. Uh, these are great for making sounds. So just like you have the servo to make motion, this can make beeps or tones or sing little songs, maybe good to indicate when something's going on and maybe somebody isn't going to be able to see the huzzah, but they can hear your feather creation. So piezo buzzer. We also have some nice big jelly bean LEDs. I love these. These are nice big LEDs. This one only is red, but I kind of like the big indicator look to it. And then we also include a green one, green for go. Also a nice big LED. We also included a bunch of big buttons. I like these, you know, they're just good for when you wanna indicate something and then you press a button to start or stop. So this is a nice big button, works well with a breadboard 
and uh, nice and large so it's easy to press. And you get three of those. Slippery. Uh, you also get a bunch of 10K resistors, good for buttons or other components when you want to pull up or a pull down resistor. So as well as the uh, 560s, we give you some 10Ks. I also included a potentiometer. Kind of good if you want to have some sort of twisting motion or turn something up or down or brighter or louder or less bright, less loud. So trim potentiometer. There's also a simple light sensor. So this is a CDS cell and it can detect light. So you've already got a sensor that can detect motion, humidity, temperature. This one can be good if you want to detect when a room is brighter or darker. By um, putting your hand over it, you know, you can shade it. So it can also kind of detect human motion over a uh, set space if you know the lighting. You can detect that darkness, that shadow. Also got a uh, on off switch, like a basic switch. I like these switches. They fit really well into a breadboard and then you just kind of click on and off. And then last but not least, I like this. This is the vibration sensor. So this is a little sensor that has a spring inside of it and when it shakes, it can detect that. So this is good for, uh, you know, if you don't want an accelerometer but you want to detect motion or shaking, um, maybe your uh, feather project would let you know when something was moved or you could put it on top of your dryer and so it would be vibrating while your clothes are drying and then when it's done vibrating, it would let you know, hey, your laundry's done. So I think that's it. These are just the screws from the sensor and this is the bag. So let's just quickly go over everything you got because I know there's a lot. So you've got your breadboard, your ESP8266 that's underneath here in your feather, a uh, battery to go along with it an OLED feather wing. You've got your ruler, a nice collectible pin, pin backing to go with it, your contents, wires for use with a breadboard, servo, motion. You've got your temperature and humidity sensor, a uh, magnetic door sensor, PIR sensor for detecting motion, and then a bunch of components, some resistors, some buttons, trim potentiometer, green LED, red LED, RGB LED, piezo buzzer, light sensor, and on off switch. So you got a lot of stuff going on here. So for example, you might be wondering like, I don't even know where to start with this. Well, you're in luck because we have dozens of guides for using Adafruit IO, our cloud service, as well as using all of these components and devices. So, you know, you can make a motion sensor that emails you, or like I said, a, something that tells you when your laundry is done. I could use that. I always forget to take my laundry out. But also you've got humidity sensors and buttons and switches. So there's a lot of uh, parts and pieces that you can fit together to make your own project. And uh, check out all of our guides to Get started, we've got a good IO basics guide set that will take you from the most basic button press all the way up to a temperature and humidity sensor that will graph on your tablet or your phone and you can view a temperature and humidity environment sensor from far away. Okay, so we've gone through all of the parts that come in the AdaBox. Let's put them away and then look at a project that you can build using your AdaBox 3. You're gonna put this pin on. There you go. Okay, so you've got all these parts. What are you gonna build with it? Well, we've got a dozen different IO beginner projects, guides, tutorials for you to get started with. And here's one that you can build after you've had a little bit of practice. This is the Feather Huzzah with the Feather OLED on top of it, connected up to the temperature and humidity sensor, and I've got that battery to make it nice and portable. I can use the OLED to display the current status. Am I connected to the internet? Am I getting humidity and temperature data and displaying that? That's really handy for debugging your project, making sure it's working. And then you can send that data to Adafruit IO, our free Internet of Things service. So here, I've created a dashboard. You can follow along with the guide on how to make your own dashboard. And I'm plotting the temperature, that's blue, and then the humidity. So the temperature is about 
70 degrees, makes sense, we're indoors. And the humidity is about you know, 35%. Of course, you can also verify this on the OLED itself. So you can see data is coming in here because you see these little dots appearing. And if I blow on the sensor, the humidity of my breath will make the graph spike. So give it just a few seconds. You can see the data coming in. And the humidity from my humid breath has caused the sensor to spike very quickly up to about 80%. And then it will slowly come back down to the 35% of the uh, natural environment. So you can tell it's very responsive. You can get a lot of data very fast. And even though I'm right here, the information from this project is going into the cloud to Adafruit IO where it's stored. So even though I'm only about a foot away, I could be doing this from across the country or across the globe. I can use my phone or my computer, or in this case, my tablet to graph that data. And then, of course, you can set up triggers. Maybe you want a notification when the temperature humidity goes abo above or below a number. You can set that up with Adafruit IO as well. So as you can see, the cloud is your oyster. Well, there's no limits to what you can come up with with these projects. I'd love to see what internet-connected cloud projects you come up with. So make sure to make Instagrams and tweets and Facebooks and YouTube videos and send them along. We can post them up on our blog. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed your Adabox 003. All right. Welcome to the Adabox 03, live demos, and more. I'm Phil. Hey, Phil. See this? This is a pen. Hmm. I can't find the answer to the question. Oh, no. <laughs> Echo wants to join in. Oh, Echo. Anyways, Lady Ada, let's do this thing. Absolutely. Okay. All right. <laughs> uh, okay, hey, everybody. It's me, Lady Ada. Uh, so we, um, we're at my desk now, but we had uh, filmed that lovely promo video with all the unboxing and stuff, and we had some great camera work by the Adafruit team. But uh, I'm actually here to just answer live questions, Anybody have any requests or you know ideas for projects with AdaBox 03? Um, I'm here, hanging out. Chilling. Yeah, ask your questions in the chat, everybody. Yeah. Um, and we're then we'll have a giveaway. Yeah, we're gonna be doing some live questions and more. And uh, Lady Ada, let's just show everybody what's this AdaBox all about. Yeah. What do you want me to do? <laughs> well, what do you want to do? This is your show. Well, you know, I mean, I could, I could uh, unbox again, but I think, I mean, this is a nice box. I've got, uh, I could show off some of the guides. Yeah. But that was tough to show because I was on the desk. Um, so if you go to the learning system, we have... By the way, in the chat room, everyone says that was a great video. Shout outs to Colin, Charlene, Andrew, and everyone involved. Everyone in kidding, shipping, all parts of Adafruit. Silly, did the desk. All parts of Adafruit. You know how hard it is to make those fluffy clouds? Like, it's it's hard. The fluff takes a lot of care. John OBC, Danny, everybody in Kidding, Noelle, just want to shout out to everybody. Jonathan for shipping half of them. Jonathan shipped half of them. Paul shipped the other half. <laughs> Paul Mordeeb. Uh, thanks. Um, so, um, Adafruit IO is our Internet of Things service. And um, it's free. You know, you, you don't even have to buy an AdaBox to use it. Um, it allows you to store data in the cloud uh, and also graph it, as I showed in the demo. You can, um, it, because it's a website, it's on app, you can view it from a computer, a tablet, a phone, any internet-enabled device that you can browse to a website can, um, can check it out. I don't know which title I'm in. I thought like maybe Sting did a cover, but it turns out. Okay, sorry. when do you want to answer questions, ladies? I'll answer questions right now. Okay, can we run the OLED example sketch? I want to make sure it isn't broken. Possible to attach interrupts to the buttons on the feather? That's a good question. For the OLED, um, we actually have uh, OLED feather wing. We have a full guide just on the OLED feather wing, so check it out. We have um, example code, how to download the library. And like here's an example that we have that lets you press all the different buttons and they show up so you can even test the buttons. So um, check this out for the details. We've actually had um, the Feather OLED for over a year now. People really like it. 
Uh, that's why we included it in the beta box. Okay, like I'm going to answer the... the I, I'm sorry, breaking news. Breaking news. i got to answer this question right away because it's the most asked question. i got to answer it right away. i got to do the last song. Okay, folks, you're asking, can I get Ada Box in Europe and Canada and all over the world? Yes, we're working with DHL, and we'll be able to do this worldwide very soon. So, get ready. We've got something really cool coming. And we always put Ada Box in the store after That's we right. shipped it. So you can always buy it as sort of like a retail customer. Yeah, but you don't worry. We're working on it. We want to make sure that when you place the order, sales through customs, duties, taxes, everything paid for, batteries taken care of, that's what we're working on. Right now, this second, we just met with DHL yesterday about this. That's rad. It's true. That's rad. That's true. That's rad. Thank you. <laughs> Thank that you for taking care news. of that breaking news. Um, okay, so the question was um, OLED demo code. Check out the OLED feather wing. It has a ton of details on everything you would ever need to know about anything with the feather OLED. Um, and then, of course, you can add it to any of your example uh, projects. And then um, about interrupts with the ESP8266, yes, you can put uh, sensors and such on interrupts. Um, I believe any pin can be interrupt on the ESP8266. Okay. I think so. We're Snapchatting this. Don't forget to add Adabot to your Snapchat. Okay, more questions. You ready? Yeah. Do you know how long I.O. will be free? Is it forever? It's a great service. Thanks so much. I can answer that question. There'll always be a free version of Adafruit I.O. We are going to have a pro version for people who want to do way more. There'll always be absolutely something free Our that promise. people can use. However, okay. we may have a pro version that has more capabilities. Can you make a drone with a feather? More people. Yes, you can. It totally has the capability. Okay. The ESP could probably do it. Okay. Uh, you just need the sensors and the motor drivers. Okay. It All is right. light as a feather. Okay. Okay. Uh, what language do you use to program all this? Um, we use primarily Arduino, C, C++, to program the ESP8266. It has the most example code. Uh, it's well documented. Um, you know, people use a lot of it. Almost everyone who's using the ESP8266, which is the chipset in this Ada box, um, uses Arduino. However, uh, you don't have to. You can use Lua or you can use MicroPython. Those are also two supported languages that are available for this chip, and all of the components that we add can be used with it as well. Our GPIO, pin, GPIO pins 9 and 10 broken on the ESP8266? I don't think so. Those are used by the SPI flash, <coughs> if I can recall. We break out uh, all the pins that are available. Okay, next up. Can two feather huzzahs talk to each other over Wi-Fi? Yes, you can set up one as a server or an access point and the other one is a client and then you can communicate between the two. It's like, you know, you're basically just like setting up two devices on the internet except you just have like a very small internet of two devices. Okay, I'll enter this one. Is it too late to get on Adabox? No, you should sub start to subscribe now, but don't worry, we'll always have it in the store. You'll get number 004. Next up, what if Autodesk buys Adafruit IO? We are not selling Adafruit IO to Autodesk. You heard it here first. Is we are not right? doing that. That's that's nothing is Autodesk. I like Autodesk. Yeah, I, but we are not selling the service. To I anyone. do not foresee that. Yeah. In not. any way. Okay. Next up, uh, level or edge sensitive interrupts. I don't recall what pins have level or edge interrupts. Um, because I actually haven't used. I mean, I've used them, but I just can't recall. And every chip is a little different. Um, for that, you'll want to check out the um, Espresso Arduino GitHub repository. Uh, but I believe it can do both. Okay. Uh, you definitely do like falling and rising. Can I write? Can I uh, spin my own copy of Adafruit IO my own server? And no, you don't. You can't run your own version of Adafruit IO, <laughs> the full graphing system. Um, it's it's pretty complicated. However, you can always run your own MQTT server. We even have guys on how to do that. If you go to Mosquito on a Raspberry Pi, you can basically run all of the tutorials. And instead of talking to the Adafruit MQTT server, you talk to your own private MQTT server. Okay, I can answer this one. Someone wants to know, can I integrate Adafruit IO to control other IoT things like Wemo Smart Wall Plug? Use if then this app. You yes. Can, yeah. It can it can trigger. We do it here. Other devices, you can use if this and that. You can every day and every way. Zapier. Zapier, however you say it, um, to do back and forth integration. Okay. Actually, we also have a guide on you can make like fake Wemo devices with the um, ESP. Can you control a water pump with the ESP8266? You can. I would have a motor driver, but yes, it can control it if you have something to drive the 
powerful pump. Okay. Uh, Node MCU Lua is a real pain to type interactively. Is there an easy way to cat the text file to it? I don't know, honestly. I've only used it interactively, and I don't use Lua that much. Yeah, I can answer this. Uh, can you use Adafruit IO with non Adafruit dev boards? Yes. Yes. Go for it. Okay. Anything that has MQTT support, it's a standard. Okay. If it uses it, use Adafruit IO with it. Like a generic, oh no, yes. Uh, is there a limit on feeds, like if I had 9 to 10 items? Uh, right now, we might stop. Uh, I think we have a limit on. Yeah, we might stop a bunch of usage. Uh, next up, I can answer the next question. Love to use Adafruit for jobs boards. Are coming back anytime soon? Yep, we're working on a new. Working version. on it. Yep. Okay, we got through all these questions. Sweet. Any more questions? Questions. Don't make us get the TXL out. Can you do a demo with the servo to turn on a computer? You could. If you want to turn on and off a computer, I would actually recommend like a power switch tail. Yeah, power switch tail. Which, I mean, you can just servo to press the button, absolutely, <laughs> but a power switch tail will actually like turn off and on the power. That might be better. Yeah. A little shout out here. Shout out to MQTT. Nice standard. Good work, IBM. Designed for satellites, now used by kids a little bit. Is there more. an interface with Adafruit IO and MicroPython yet? MicroPython, no, but Python, yes. Okay. I, don't, I, actually, I actually don't know if we did a MicroPython. Okay. Can you use Feather as a MIDI keyboard? Um, it does not do Bluetooth or USB native, so you'd have to have something else. But it, it could communicate with MIDI as a UART device, but not very well. It's kind of like the one thing it doesn't do well. Can two Huzzahs talk on the same home network? Yes. Okay. Can yeah, I use my own it? MQT server, and can it queue and proxy data for I.O.? Yes, actually somebody wrote a guide about it, and they said, like, at the end they're like, I don't know why I did this. It was really hard, and it didn't make a lot of sense, but you could absolutely do that. Toggle switches. Okay. Um, what about toggle switches? Can you, could we demo, could we do a demo down the road with MicroPython and the OLED, or CircuitPython with the OLED? Um, Tony D has absolutely done a video with CircuitPython or, or MicroPython with the OLED display. Um, I don't remember exactly when, but I know it's one of the drivers that we have. Two-part question. If I have questions that I want to get started, can I ask you on Ask an Engineer next week? Yes. Can we harass you? No. No. Okay. Um, can you integrate a Fona and the microcontroller on one chip? We have a Feather Fona. It's a little bit of a challenge. Um, the, you know, there's a lot of power requirements, and the Fona is, you know, it, it's doing cellular. It's very noisy, but... Um, I, I would recommend maybe having your phone a little bit farther away, if possible, but yes, you can integrate okay. them. Uh, first one, uh, can you use Adafruit I.O. with wearables? Yeah. Okay. Next up, um, what is MQTT? I did a guide and a video about MQTT, but basically it's the protocol, it's a very lightweight protocol that allows Internet of Things devices to communicate without using a lot of power. And that state, um, it's an alternative to using uh, like basically HTTP, like a REST protocol, um, in that it's just it's just very small packets of data. And basically, if you're on Wi-Fi, it doesn't maybe matter so much, but if you're using MQTT over cellular, it can reduce your bandwidth by like 80%. Okay. Um, what's the best way to convert 24 volts AC to 5 volts DC? Uh, the easiest way is to rectify the 24 volts AC and you'll get like 40 volts DC and then you use a step down or a linear regulator to bring it down to uh, 5 volts DC. Okay, someone pointed out, you can always post comments in the forums. That's so true. Thank you, Nemesis. Thank you, Nemesis. Who's Master Blaster? You're Master Blaster. Next up, Adafruit, who designs the pins? My daughter loved it. Bruce, Bruce Yan, Yan. Yeah. John OBC, and our entire team, including Lady Ada they and myself, the designed the pins. They love the pins. You want to show a pin on the overhead? Yeah, sure. Here, I'm going to give you this pin, Lady Ada. I'm going to give you two pins. One of these pins is a sign of my personal freedom. The other, sign, <laughs> the other pin is a sign of my personal freedom. Uh... Okay. Both so, pins are assigned to my personal freedom. Okay, so this is that IoT. Must respect 
for the individual. This is the IoTE Nimbus Cloud Pins. It's like a happy little cloud because this is like a happy cloud project. It has eight foot in the back. So this is a collectible pin because uh, we don't have any plans to sell these or anything. And then um, this is uh, your pin that you like to wear. Yeah. This is your pride. Yeah. Pride in America. Pride and pride. We've got a diverse company, a diverse community. We celebrate all of you. Rainbows diverse country. Are, rainbows are pretty good at that. And okay. rainbows are pretty cool. Next up. Why would we use MQTE instead of COAP, C-O-A-P? Um, we decided with, to go with COAP because uh, COAP, I think, is a, a little more stateless, and we wanted to have like some idea of connection. Um, MQTE also seemed to be what people were using the most, so we wanted to go with the standard that was very popular. A lot of people were using Mosquito, and um, uh, a lot of other services were using MQTT. Uh, to do this kind of like uh, data transfer. You know, I'm not against co-op. I might add co-op. We might add co-op support to A4IO, but right now we only support REST and MQTT. Okay. Uh, next up. Got my Ada Box 03 currently working my way through the A4IO basic store. It's very fun. Thanks, Lady Ada. Next up. Does MQTT have any relation to Rapid or other desktop server MQ services? I don't know. I've never used Rapid. Um, MQTT was developed by IBM. I think it's a derivative of a protocol used to communicate with satellites where you know you want to have uh, a good connection, but you don't want to waste your bytes. So it says, thank God your products are available and you guys rock. You know what? We don't do religion here, but I do believe in a higher power and I believe it brings us all together. Okay. Also, a lot of people are trying Altium. Glad we did that interview. Look, try it. Maybe it's better. Maybe. Thanks, Ted. Yeah, check out our YouTube channel. Ted, the Chief Marketing Officer of Altum, answered every single question we threw at him. Next up, people keep asking about this, so I'm just going to go ahead and do it. Ready? Yeah. So here's the dealio, folks. These glasses, I can see through them. There's slots. I can see perfectly fine. I can see everything. Yeah. I can see into your soul. I can see your deepest secret fears. Okay. In that dark place? Yeah, I live in that dark place. And when you look at it, I look back at you. Okay. Any, any more questions? No, I think that ended everything. Okay, cool. Well, I thought maybe we could do a little giveaway. You want to do a giveaway? Yeah, for the nice people who've been with us on this journey. Yeah. You are on a journey, we are on a journey. We are on a journey together. All right, let's do this, Lady Yeah. Here's what we're gonna do. What are we gonna do? You ready? Yeah. First off, what are we giving away? An Ada Box 3. We're gonna give away an Ada Box 3. Yeah. So this is great for people who uh, haven't gotten one already, or maybe they wanna give one away. I want to ask if you've won something before mm -hmm. from Adafruit. Let somebody else have a chance. We like everybody to have a chance here. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. We'll it's see how it goes. Ready? Yeah. Call the phone number Ohm Bit Stab. The phone number is Ohm Bit Stab. First call gets an Adabox 3. Just be prepared to say your name and where you're from, and you'll be on the air. Ohm Bit Stab is the phone number. Ooh, Dallas phone. Let's see if this one works. Sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. Well, then. <clears throat> if it goes to voicemail, leave a nice message. Okay. We ready? I'm gonna take it. Right now, or when I pick it up? When you pick it up. Pick it up. Hello, you reached the desk of Lady Ada, and we're giving away a free Ada Box 3. You're the winner! So what's your name, and where are you calling from? Wow, amazing. I'm Ian, and I'm calling from Arlington, Virginia. Wow, congratulations, Ian. Well, you've run this Ada Box 003. It's our IoT-based pack. Do you have any ideas for some projects you might work on with it? Um, I, I actually have... The Adabox 3, so I think I'm going to be giving this one away awesome. to someone. 
Yeah, so fantastic. But uh, I think I'm going to give it away to um, a coworker. So, yeah. Sweet. So fun. Get them hooked on the IoT enjoyment. Well, to claim your prize, all you have to do is email support at adafruit.com and just say, hey, it's Ian from Virginia. I won the Ada Box 3, and we will get you another one, and your coworker will be like, damn, Ian's cool. Ian, you're the best. Ian, uh-huh. you're the best. All right. Hey, well, thanks so much, Lady Ada, um, and Phil, thanks. All right. Well, thank you so much for calling, and uh, tune in for our next broadcast. We'll be doing more IoT projects. All right. Okay. Bye, Ian. Bye. And remember, if you call and get our voicemail, you can always leave a message. You know what we'll do? We'll play it on the air. So leave something nice. If you leave something bad, bad things will happen to you. True. Um, all right, well, congratulations to Ian for winning the Ada Box. Any other calls? I'm turning it off. You sure? We have two Ada Boxes. Nope. 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 Pick, pick it up and say hi. Hello, this is the desk of Lady Ada. Unfortunately, we've given away our prize, but you could say hello on the air if you'd like. Uh, hi, yes. Hi, what's your name and where are you calling from? Uh, my name is Kevin McElhenney. I'm calling from Plinkington, South Dakota. Awesome. Wow, that's kind of cool. South Dakota. Is Kevin? Kevin from South Dakota. I'll tell you what, Kevin, we have two Ada boxes. You get one. Oh, we're going to get you another Ada Box 003. Congratulations. You've charmed us. Sweet. Sweet. All you have to do is email support at Adafruit. Tell them you're Kevin from South Dakota. We're going to give you another Ada box. Hey, you know what? We're just feeling generous tonight. That's great. Um, I'm actually a science teacher, so I'm going to use it in my classroom, so that's fantastic. Oh, that's so cool. What kind of science do you teach? Is it like chemistry or bio or what? Oh, uh, I, I teach at a small school, so I'm actually life science, physical science. I'm everything. I'm the only science teacher for 7th through 12th grade. Thank there. you for your service. This is the most important thing anyone can do. Yes, thank you so much for, for teaching kids and teaching them the love of science. Science is awesome, and I'm sure you're a wonderful teacher and you inspire the kids in your school. Ask Kevin if he could say something to all these people, what would he say? If you could say something to all these people, what would you say? Uh, keep learning and teach those around you. That's hey. excellent advice. Thanks, Kevin. Email support at adafruit.com. You got an box. Yeah, please uh, email support, and we'll get you your prize. Thank you so much for calling, and thank you so much for thank teaching the much. future generation. All right, bye. Bye. All right, folks, that's it for tonight. We're done with Ada Box 3. Guess what? We're never going to stop doing these. Free stuff. Yeah, that's cool. I like a teacher getting a prize given to the students. This is a good project pack for students because they're going to build all sorts of cool internet things. Yes, that's right. We're going to be doing Desk of Lady Ada during the week. Tomorrow we have show and tell at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. We have Ask an Engineer at 8 p.m. We do this all the time. We don't stop. We're here for you, and you're here for us. If you get the voicemail, Say hello, say something nice, we'll play it on the air. Lady Ada, this was Ada Box 03. Yes, this definitely was Ada Box 03. Woo! Okay, that's it. We're out. Bye, everyone. Bye, Thank everyone. you so much.